Philip, if you're listening, uh, this is the one you're going to need to send out. I want to read you a quote. This is from Kurt Bardella. He was a Republican who didn't like Trump. He's now become a DNC advisor. Listen to this quote he gave on MSNBC after the President of the United States referred to Republicans as semi-fascists. This quote, The Republican Party is basically a domestic terrorist cell at this point, and they should be treated as such. It's a Democrat on MSNBC. Here are a few more quotes. Uh, A guy on Twitter, Tim Wood, captured these quotes off of MSNBC. There is no alternative right now because the Republican Party today is a fascist authoritarian project. They are a dime storefront for a terrorist movement. The Republican Party is no longer a party, but rather a white nationalist movement and a fascist threat to the nation. That's not hyperbolic. That's academic. Make America Great Again hat popularized by the former president was akin to a modern-day swastika or a Ku Klux Klan hood. The president calls them semi-fascist. Nancy Pelosi calls them enemies of the state. These are all statements made on or about the Republican Party. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, I'm looking again for the source of the one, and uh, this is, yep, these are all statements on MSNBC. These are all actual statements made about the Republican Party. So Joe Biden and the Democrats offer us this idea that Donald Trump could provoke riots and violence in the country with his words. 74 million people voted for Donald Trump. And they're being referred to as fascists on MSNBC, racists, white nationalists, though many of them were not white. Make America Great Again hat popularized by the former president was akin to a SWAT sticker, according to those on MSNBC. A man attempted to kill Brett Kavanaugh. He was fired up by, among other things, decisions on guns and decisions on abortion. Joe Biden has never condemned it. Merrick Garland has never gone out and prosecuted the people protesting in front of Supreme Court justices' homes, though it is against the law to do so. The FBI has declined to investigate the firebombings of pregnancy centers around the country. And yet, and yet, they're focused on fascism from the Republican Party. The Judicial Crisis Network has launched a new ad. It has the audio of the 911 call of the would-be Kavanaugh assassin. We got my guy at one Are you thinking of hurting anyone, including yourself? Brett Kavanaugh, the Supreme Court Justice. Do you have access to any weapons? I brought a firearm with me. There is pepper spray. There is uh, a knife. Are you on foot? You're in a car? I'm just standing in front of the house. And what were you coming to do, just to hurt him? Correct. This assassination attempt on a Supreme Court justice should have been a tipping point for Democrats. How far does it have to go before Democrats stop endangering justices? It's a good question, because I don't think they care. Don't think the majority of the Democratic Party out there really cares about uh, if Amy Coney Barrett or Brett Kavanaugh dies, uh, particularly with Joe Biden in the White House, they think they'll be able to roll back Roe v. Wade. It's terribly crass to have to say it that way, but I think it's true. I mean, if you're a progressive Democrat and you think that they screwed up, wouldn't you like to see one of these people replaced by Joe Biden so you can undo the damage of the Dobbs decision, even if it means that someone has to kill one of these justices to open up space? They are literally standing outside their homes protesting right now against the law, and Merrick Garland is doing nothing. 
There have been dozens of pregnancy centers around this country that have been firebombed after Elizabeth Warren and other Democrats launched attacks on them, claiming that they were misleading women. You know what they do? They give women free ultrasounds, prenatal vitamins, and health care when they're pregnant. Yet the media has not chosen to fight back and fact check the misinformation and disinformation on that they're too busy calling republicans fascists they're too busy allowing joe biden to call republicans fascists they're too busy willing to allow the democrats to say every bad thing possible about republicans and let them get away with it and affirm what they say it is not members of the democratic party who were in the crosshairs of a madman who attempted a mass assassination of members of Congress. It was the Republicans. James Lee Hodgkinson was a Rachel Maddow fan, a fan of the Southern Poverty Law Center, and a Bernie Sanders supporter. He was driven to take action against Republicans after Democrats started saying the Republicans were going to kill people with their health care repeal of Obamacare, and he drove from his home down to a baseball field where Republicans were practicing for a game and opened fire. And the FBI, the very same FBI that wants us to believe it has no partisan motivation a couple of months before the election raiding Donald Trump's house, told us it was actually death by suicide. It wasn't political violence. Do you remember that? Do you remember? Because that actually happened. The Democrats at the FBI, and yes, the Democrats at the FBI, announced it was not a political assassination or even politically motivated. It was death by cop. That's exactly what they said. Even Nancy Pelosi was offended by what the FBI did and got with Republicans to make the FBI change it. Even Nancy Pelosi was at that point willing to stand up and say, nope, this isn't right. It was obvious what happened. The terrorist at Fort Hood was labeled workplace violence by the FBI. There is violence stirring in this country. The media and the Democrats only care about Republicans being violent. The media and the Democrats only care about highlighting someone they can label a Trump supporter as violent. In New York City, the number of attacks on Jews has skyrocketed. Only one person has served any time in jail for attacking Jews in New York. It is not MAGA Republicans attacking Jews in New York. and The media chooses not to cover it in the same way they don't cover the daily violence in Chicago. What the media covers and chooses not to cover is a symptom of their biases right now. You know, they were covering all of the anti-Asian violence after the attack in Atlanta at the asian theme massage parlor. You know, no one in the media has ever accurately covered that as the guy was addicted to sex and going to these spas for sex. No one's wanted to talk about the asian theme massage parlors around the country and what they usually are fronts for, what this guy knew and what this guy decided he was going to do something about because he believed they fed his addiction. They tried to make it about white supremacy, white violence, and Trump supporters when it turned out to be the guy was a sex addict and he wanted to punish the people he thought were contributing to his sex addiction. And then when all of the other violence against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, the phrase created by the census department that otherwise has no meaning, they started focusing on that until it turned out the majority of the violence was done by young black men, and they had to stop talking about it because it didn't go against Trump and his supporters in the media. There's violence coming in this country. You have environmentalists in this country who believe as long as you drive your fossil fuel burning car, you're destroying the planet no matter what they do as long as you exist they're going to burn too. When Republicans take back Congress in November, they will at least take back the House of Representatives and they just might take back the Senate. And they start using reconciliation to roll back some of this Green New Deal stuff. What do you think is going to happen? Democrats fret about Republicans rioting in the streets. I've already seen the riots in Washington, D.C., When Trump was elected, after George Floyd, you name it. Seen the riots in Kenosha, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Minnesota, in Portland, Oregon. The media sure doesn't cover that stuff. And when they have to cover it, they give it a pass. You know, it's mostly peaceful. Didn't you know that? It's mostly peaceful, you bigot. Violence is coming.
You have the president of the United States calling Republicans fascist and semi-fascist. You have people on MSNBC saying the Republican Party basically operates as a domestic terror operation and should have no legitimacy as a political party. You have Elizabeth Warren stand out in front of a pregnancy center and say they all need to be shut down, they're harming women, and they get firebombed, and the media never wants to engage in any sort of hand-wringing over, oh my gosh, maybe Democratic rhetoric is causing violence. But Donald Trump says something and suddenly the whole world is going to be set on fire by his words. Maybe it's that they don't really believe this stuff. They just want to use it, a partisan weapon. And if they don't really believe it, if they're not willing to hold both sides accountable, then maybe you should just not believe it either. And maybe you should note the awful, awful things members of the media say about you because you refuse to get in line with their agenda. They're willing to vilify you as a racist, as a bigot, as a homophobe, as a transphobe, as a right-wing Nazi, as a white supremacist bigot. And they don't want to pay any attention to any of the violence coming out of the left. They don't want to pay any attention to any of the violence coming out of the environmental movement or any of the violence coming out of the pro-abortion movement, any of the violence coming out of Antifa and Black Lives Matters, they don't want to pay attention to any of it to the extent that they do, they give it an excuse. It's a reaction to systemic oppression. What can you expect? And that tells me it's only going to get worse. And when it does get worse, it's going to come from the left, not from the right. And the media will excuse it. A man tried to assassinate a justice of the United States Supreme Court. Joe Biden has never even bothered to comment on it. And Merrick Garland, his attorney general, is continuing against the law to allow people to stand out in front of Supreme Court justices' homes and keep them up at night protesting. This is the same party that showed up at restaurants where Republicans were and sent a mob to chase them out of restaurants. And the media gave that a pass as well. And they really think they can de-escalate the situation. They themselves are the ones making it worse. And of course, they're going to blame you for the things that their side does. They will claim you provoked it. When what happened? They're the ones who stood out and said, shut down these abortion clinics or these pro-life pregnancy centers and then watched them get firebombed and ignored the matter and did not even bother to ask the FBI to look into it. These are the people who turned their back when someone was showing up at a justice's house to assassinate him. These are the people who moved on from James Hodgkinson as quickly as they could once they found out he was a Bernie Sanders supporter. And yet they want you to have your nose rubbed in a statement from Donald Trump while their president stands on stage and calls half of America fascists and semi-fascists simply because they think the country should go in a different direction, the direction where the economy worked when Donald Trump was in power. That's not going to win them the election, but it is going to provoke a lot of violence.